Hello everyone, back to you today's second video. So we're going to do for today, look ahead from the Beijing Climate Centre for today's second video. It's going to take us to the start of November. Uh, so we're going to send into the final month of the autumn with this update. I haven't really had any autumn yet, but we are going to have a cooler, more autumnal feel over the next five days. And if you want to know what's happening in the next five days, check out five-day forecast. The video to that is on the homepage. Just scroll down the page a bit. And uh, you'll be able to find it underneath the link ad. So there's also a written version. You get to that via the button at the top of the page. Um, if you want to see the Beijing Climate Centre for yourself, the charts at Beijing Climate Centre, you can find the link to uh, that website on the links page. So I'll get on with that in a second. Just say about the ads. I've already said about the link ads. There's link right across all the pages. Have a browse, which is click through the links. If there's any articles that you want to see, you'll have your pay for the website. Thanks so much for doing that. So we'll start off with 500 bit of our height anomalies next 40 days, broken down into 10 day periods. And then I'll have a look at the corresponding temperature and precipitation anomalies that go with those 500 bit of our heights. So uh, the first 10 day period is going to take us from the 26th of September through to the 5th of October. So becoming 10 days, if you like. Um, 500 meters, 8,000 feet is now in actually high pressure, low pressure being moved around by a jet stream running above. And these uh, height anomalies extrapolate to pressure. So where we've got blue, it's essentially telling us we've got below average heights, which is low pressure, and orange, red, the brighter colours always extrapolate to above average heights, which is high pressure. So for the coming 10 days, we've got a ridge down to the south and southwest with a trough up to the north. And it means that the jet stream is going through the country a bit like that, but it is a little bit northerly displaced. The south is fairly close to this ridge, so the driest conditions would be in the south, the wettest conditions would be in the north. Um, and of course, close to this trough of low pressure, we would also be expecting some quite strong winds as the jet stream increases. And we are going to have a spell of gales or severe gales in the far north of Scotland overnight tonight and into tomorrow morning. So you go through to the next 10 day period. This goes from the 6th through to the 15th of October. And heights are generally pulling a little bit more in towards the central part of the Atlantic then and lowering up towards the northeast. We have to come over to this side of the chart to see Scandinavia. It's going a bit lower with the heights there, which I think probably sends the jet stream on a bit of a northwest southeast trajectory. So as going to the early part of October, it possibly turns cooler. I think there's still a fair amount of dry weather because we are more or less blocking off the Atlantic with this ridge, so I wouldn't think it's overly wet, but it probably turns a bit cooler there as we're going through into that early part of October. The next 10 days, which is through the middle part of October, this takes us from the 16th through 25th of October, are uh, heights generally just to the west, northwest of the UK. Uh, so very close to above average heights again. I will think a lot of dry weather continues. Again, probably not overly warm. The centre of that ridge is just to the west of us, so it probably means that the flow is coming sort of west northwest around the top of that high pressure. I wouldn't think that would be overly warm, but fairly pleasant conditions there through the middle part of October. A lot of dry weather, I think. And then we go through to the last 10 days. It's quite interesting. It takes us from the 26th of October through to the 4th of November. And signs then that we're beginning to send that above average height, so high pressure, beginning to move up towards Greenland. Uh, so that could be turning things significantly colder. We've got heights lowering across Scandinavia, and I think between the two, we could well be starting to pull down some northerly winds. So we go through to the start of November, and that could turn um, uh, significantly colder there, um, certainly with night frost, and uh, maybe even a few wintry showers uh, coming into the north of uh, the Scotland. That's a long way off. It's days 31 to 40, but I think that's the implication of sending those above average heights up towards Greenland. Temperature anomaly is the next 40 days, so the uh, coming 10 days, 26th of September through to 5th of October, comes out warmer than average. Makes sense, really, in terms of the 500 mm height anomaly. The next 10 days, where I thought we could be setting things up more northwest to southeast with a jet stream, so possibly a bit cooler. Actually, it still looks above average with the temperatures. It's an anomaly of around one degree above average. The warmest temperature anomalies are going up to the north and west of the country around Greenland, and uh, the coolest anomalies are out in the Atlantic. I think it does turn a bit cooler there for the middle part of uh, October, albeit not desperately cool. We go through to the uh, next 10 days, the uh, 16th through 25th of October, 
that comes out a bit warmer than average. And then the final 10 days is more or less back to average. Now, this is when we're starting to set up that area of the above average heights around Greenland, uh, starting to lift the high pressure up towards Greenland. So the model is indicating temperatures to be more or less average. Um, I reckon, as you go through to that last 10 days, if the anomaly came off as it shows a height anomaly, we will probably be looking at a cooler or colder than an average start to uh, November. The model, as ever with these long range seed models, they tend to be a little bit biased onto the milder side of things. Um, Precipitation anomalies for the coming 10 days, that uh, looks wetter than average in most parts of the country. Well, it is significantly drier than average just to the southwest, so it does imply that southern parts of the country probably is likely to be on the drier side. But certainly in the north, a wetter than average 10 days coming up. The next 10 day period from the 6th through to 15th of October, that one looks close to average with the precipitation. And then the next 10 days, going from the 16th to 25th of October, that actually looks drier than average on the drier side of things. That's because the heights are all out to the west, of course. So the high, high pressure is here, and that means that the jet stream is doing something like that, which you will think would be a cooler uh, scenario, um, but also drier as well. And then we go through to the last 10 days, is when the high pressure is going up towards Greenland, and that one is turning, it's turning a bit wetter actually, it's turning a little bit wetter than average, so cool, maybe cold and wet conditions uh, as we go through, <coughs> excuse me, as we go through into the very end of October and the start of November. Uh, quite interesting what that height anomaly is doing as we get through to the end of November, uh, start of November, end of October, start of November. It's a very long way off, days 31 to 40. Let's concentrate on what's happening for October and the uh, signal really is for quite a bit of dry weather there. I don't think we're looking at an overly wet month. Um, and although it may start off quite unsettled, it looks like pressure will be rising in the Atlantic, which should ensure that we don't have too wet a month. It will be rain coming through, of course, it is an autumn uh, month, so there will be bands of rain at times, but overly, overall, not overly wet. Uh, temperatures are looking uh, more uh, milder than average, warmer than average, but I think as we go along, we probably find those temperatures reverting closer to average. So what could happen is that we still come out with a milder than average month for October, but I would have thought, based on those anomalies anyway, we're unlikely to be seeing the extent of heat and uh, uh, being, uh, being as above average in October as we was in September, which of course is going to be a very warm uh, month. And then as we get through to the very end of October and start of November, hints maybe of uh, something really quite uh, significantly colder uh, turning up then. We'll uh, wait and see on that one. Um, so that's how we're looking for Beige Climate Centre for the next 40 days today. Uh, as ever, these uh, long-range charts are highly experimental, so not be relied upon. Uh, we'll have a look again next week. It might look significantly different. That's the way these uh, long-range models work. Right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.